currently working on the design. And um, about the application, I would say, so I found about uh, University of Houston through my friend circle. And uh, about after that, I went home and started Googling about the university. So the best way is to visit university website and see what their curriculum is and what their current faculty is working on and then see if those interests align with what you are looking for. So that would be my like very basic tip to start with and then just reach out to the professor. So I remember reaching out to two or three professors from the department before I started the application to know whether they are accepting application this year and what is the status going on with the application. So second is uh, reach out to, to the faculty that you think uh, your interest, um, research interest aligns with. So that's it. Yeah, I uh, yeah, I can go next. I, uh, so my name is Soham. Uh, I'm also a fourth year PhD student in the pharmaceutical health outcomes and policy department. Uh, so I, I, I am an international student. I came down from India uh, in, uh, in 2017. And uh, of course, I mean, I, I, I would echo Prajakta's words. It's, it's very important to reach out to faculty wherever you're applying to in, in, for a PhD program if they have it, if, if they have a if, if they have a position left or if they have funding or not. Also, uh, another tip is I think uh, you make sure you uh, you write your resume very proper, correctly, properly, and uh, I would give a lot of emphasis on statement of purpose. Uh, make sure you have it, uh, you know, uh, you know, make sure you write it truthfully and whatever, I mean, to the, to the best of your abilities. I think that uh, has a lot of uh, weightage. And yeah, I mean, uh, wait till the end. I mean, I, I feel I, I must be the last person to get admitted in, into the program. I got admitted in April. So don't lose your hope. Uh, so yeah, that, that's all I can say. Good enough. I can go next, Melissa. Hi everyone, my name is Kalyani. I'm a third year graduate student from Pharmacological and Pharmaceutical Sciences Department. So as uh, Prajakta and Soham suggested that um, you need to apply more carefully uh, while, while putting on the application, your resume and statement of purpose should be thoroughly viewed. And also it is most important to know your research interest and reach out to the faculty so that you can get more information regarding the current research going on in their labs and it should match your research interests. So I'm also an international student. So what I basically did was go to the UH web website and read out the, the policies and the admission procedure thoroughly. And that's how you can apply and then contact the faculty you are interested with. Thanks. So I can talk next, but I will admit that I was having technical difficulties. So I'm not sure what question was asked or um, how we're supposed to introduce ourselves. So um, I don't know, my computer was on silent and I was like, why isn't this meeting starting? Minor details, I'm not sure. So what was it, Melissa? Just introduce yourself what program you're in and a tip you may have for the application process. Um, okay, so I'm Brianna Eels. I'm a second year student um, in PPS in pharmaceutical sciences. Um, I'm actually working with a um, translational research um, advisor. And so with um, antibiotic resistance and microorganisms, um, one of my best tips, I guess, would be to really tailor your personal statement to what you're interested in. And in addition to that, make it a story. It's about you and it's your um, kind of adventure so far into the world of science. And um, for me, my science journey started a long time ago. Um, and I really made sure that was known. And also um, just like a typical writing um, note for everyone, your personal statement, although it is all about you, shouldn't have a bunch of sentences that start with I. No one wants to read I like a bazillion times. So that's just like one of my key tips is like, 
you can tell a story about yourself without including 50 bajillion eyes. So there's my, there's my two cents for the morning. Thank you. Those were it, Bina. All right, so good to have all of you here with us. So that's really good. Let's get started. Um, so why choose University of Houston Graduate School? We have 150 different master, doctoral, and professional degrees. Our programs rank really high for student satisfaction. We have the top 50 programs in US News and World Report. Um, we're also the number two most diverse public university in the US from 2017. Almost 30% of our graduate students are international. Um, we're also the number two in the nation for our online graduate degree programs, and we have over 20 fully online graduate degrees. We're also a tier one research institution, so we have funding um, and support and a lot of activity, high research activity happening. Um, so definitely our current students and our faculty are doing some really amazing things at University of Houston. And we are located in the beautiful city of Houston, um, which is always a city that looks forward and never back. Here's some things I want you to know about Houston. We are the fourth largest city in the US. We have the largest medical center in the world. We have 24 Fortune 500 company headquarters located here in Houston. Um, we have 145 different languages spoken. So again, a lot of diversity um, and we're the number one city in the US for you to start your career. There's just so many great opportunities in Houston. It's a very lively city um, and I'm sure other people can speak to that as well. So um, definitely a great place to be. I'll let Melissa take over on the mission and the co a couple other of the slides. Thank you, Bina. So as Bina has already mentioned, we do have a collaboration with the University of, with the uh, Medical Center. So at the college, we combine the opportunities and experiences of the Medical Center with what the University of Houston has to offer so that our students can get the best possible education. Um, additionally, we are committed to lifelong learning and an environment where students can develop knowledge, attitude, and skills consistent with the high standards of the scientific field for the PhD programs. We can go over to the next one. So in the College of Pharmacy, we do offer a PhD program in pharmaceutical sciences, and I'm hoping that's what everyone is here for today. Um, in the pharmaceutical sciences program, we have four concentrations um, in pharmaceutics, pharmacology, medicinal chemistry, and pharmaceutical health outcomes and policy. Um, there is a link here, and so when Bina sends this uh, presentation out to everyone, please feel free to go to the link so that you can get more information about our program. Next slide, please. We do, so most of our students are fully funded, and what I mean by most is that our full-time students are fully funded. We have a very small number of students um, that are kind of like in a special case um, where they are being funded by external sources. So um, either their employees or um, like scholarships outside of the US. Um, and so those students would not fit into this category, but for the most part, most of our students are fully funded. Um, and so funding includes a monthly assistantship stipend. You'd be employed as either a research or a teaching assistantship. Um, and then also there is a health insurance supplement which helps cover part of the health insurance as well as a GTF, which is a graduate tuition fellowship. And that covers all of the tuition and mandatory fees for up to nine credits per semester. Um, in addition to the GTF, there are other scholarship opportunities within the College of Pharmacy and then also within the grad school. So for the funding that we award all of our admitted students like the assistantship, the health insurance, and the GTF, you don't have to apply for that separately. There is no separate application that's automatically given to you. Um, but any scholarships that are with the College of Pharmacy or with the graduate school, there are separate applications for, and you would be notified when those applications become available. Um, the graduate school sends emails out periodically reminding students about certain applications. Um, and our college also sends an application to uh, in spring to all of its current students with information on how to apply for those scholarships as well. Next one, please. 
So our um, admissions process is pretty straightforward. Um, you may know some of this information already, um, but just in case, our application deadline is January the 10th. Um, and we do require that you have a bachelor's in pharmacy, biology, chemistry, or in a related field. Um, for PHOP, for the Pharmaceutical Health Outcomes and Policy Program, it is a little bit different. They do have applicants that come from various other backgrounds. Um, I know I've seen students from economics, from um, psychology. So for that program, it is a little bit different. It just depends on your experience. Um, we do also need a copy of your transcripts. And for the application process, it does not have to be official. You can upload just scanned copies of your transcript. However, be advised that you, if you are admitted, you will be required to send us official sealed transcripts. Um, and there is a minimum GPA of 3.0. For um, those of you that may have a degree outside of the US, you are required to take the English language proficiencies. And so for the TOEFL, the minimum is 79. We also require three letters of recommendation, a CV, a statement of purpose, which some of our current students have already addressed. Um, and so for the fall, we normally do require the GRE, but for fall 2021, it is being waived for some of our programs. Um, and then just feel free to reach out to me and I can kind of give you more information on that and tell you which of the programs are gonna waive it. Um, and then again, there is a link there to our application process if you do need to go back to that. And that was it for that one. All right, so I'm going to go through the application process overview. It's pretty straightforward. So the first step is the online application. You guys can go to the web link um, that's below um, to get information um, and to create a login and a password. Um, there is an application fee um, for our domestic applicants. We are offering for today um, a fee waiver code. I'll go through that information in a moment for that. Um, also, we definitely want you to submit your transcripts um, you can submit unofficial transcripts um, temporarily until you get admitted and then you'll wanna submit official transcripts. I'll give more detailed information in the next couple of slides um, for that. And then of course, test scores, if those are required, a graduate record exam, um, you will wanna submit those as well as any other additional materials. Um, I, I believe for this particular program, you guys have a, a resume and I think a statement of purpose. Um, or a personal statement that you'll need to submit as well. Um, you'll definitely want to go through um, the PhD website to kind of go through the details of what is required to submit in the application. It's a really great resource for you. And then this is the application fee waiver. It's for our domestic applicants who have attended today. So you definitely want to reach out to UH Graduate School once you've gotten to the end of the application to get the um, to get the um, fee waiver application fee waiver code. Um, you will connect with us through grad school at uh.edu. You'll submit your name, the date of the info session, which I can't believe it's already November 11th. Um, the program you're applying to, PhD in pharmacy. Um, excuse me, and then a photo of the last page of the application, which looks like this on the right. Um, it's section 19 of 19. Um, you will submit that to us. We'll make sure that you've attended today's session. So it's definitely important for you guys to respond in the chat box because um, I'll be saving the chat so that I can mark you down as attended for today. Um, just give us one to two business days to um, generate the fee waiver code and send it to you. We have to send the request to our business office and then they'll generate it for us to send to you. So just be mindful of the deadlines for the program um, plan um, carefully so that you're not waiting until the last minute for that. So just some really good tips. Um, and then of course, College of Pharmacy contact information, Melissa's email is here. And then of course, great resource, the um, web link to um, the graduate program as well. And then my information is here. We'll probably put that in the chat box um for you guys to share and then um i don't know if anyone has any other additional comments um i guess we'll open up the floor for questions from you as well um so definitely put those in the chat box or unmute yourself if you i think you accidentally muted yourself mid 
my sentence Bina. Oh, sorry. Um, so we're gonna um, go ahead and open up the floor for questions. Um, I don't know if anyone has any other um, comments from our faculty, staff, Melissa and or our students. Yeah, I was gonna um, ask if Dr. Gomika and Dr. Johnson want to um, introduce themselves to our prospective students. So uh, I'm Dr. Gomika Dugamasuria. Uh, I'm actually the uh, chair of the graduate education committee, uh, which handles the applications and all the student affairs. And uh, uh, I want to actually make us uh, um, some clarification about the personal statement. Uh, in this year, since we don't have the uh, GRE, so we have waived, I'm talking only about the PPS department. Um, therefore, we actually replaced the uh, normal personal statement with very focused four different questions. So it is basically the things that you normally write, but we want them in a very focused, specific manner. Uh, please look at the uh, application uh, guidelines. It is about, the first question is about uh, yourself, your uh, plans, uh, professional goals, uh, all those things. And second question is about your current experience in research and uh, uh, related uh, information. Please make sure to provide the details uh, about those, for example, if you if you were in a uh, publication, mention is it first author? Wh what are the things you did? Uh, those kind of detail, uh, and then uh, thirdly, why you are here? Why you want to apply here? The connection between you and the uh, our college and the department, the specific research, research uh, the specific faculty. Uh, those information and then uh, fourth is anything you want to uh, give in addition to all those so make sure you write those um, again not in a like a bullet point it should be still a, a writer so it, it is an essay uh, basically four different essays not too long uh, i think we have the word count uh, maximum 300 words per each question so uh, this is to really understand about you in a little bit more detail, since we don't have the GRE scores to evaluate you. So make sure uh, you write the specific information about you uh, related to those different areas. I think that's what I want to mainly mention. And we do have um, Dr. No, who's our assistant dean of graduate programs. He has limited um, time, so I'm going to go ahead and let him introduce himself. Yes, uh, thank you, Melissa. Uh, I welcome you all to this uh, information session, and uh, uh, please be sure to reach out to uh, Melissa or um, Dr. Gomica or Dr. Johnson if you have uh, uh, further questions. Uh, all of our uh, programs are now unified under a PhD in pharmaceutical sciences. Uh, and uh, the concentrations are in pharmacology, pharmaceutics, medicinal chemistry, and pharmaceutical health outcomes and policies. Uh, our students, uh, students who come through the, these programs uh, do very well. They're very successful. They get jobs, they get really good jobs in industry uh, as faculty, or they do postdoctoral fellowships on their way to uh, uh, you know, more permanent positions. Uh, so this is a, a very good place to be. Uh, there's a lot of research going on here. Our faculty are very well funded. Uh, they have a lot of uh, research projects uh, for you to choose from. Uh, they are very well practiced in training students and the college and the university take a great deal of interest uh, in your overall career development. Uh, so I wanna uh, thank you again for, for being here and uh, and I welcome you and I wish you a great success in whatever you do for your career. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Nice thank you. you. Yeah. Um, Melissa, madam, and Gomika, sir, for thank you for giving such a wonderful session and giving us a suitable, satisfying answers. So, that my question is like, I have uh, completed my bachelor's in pharmacy. And I have done some projects as well, but uh, I have just one publication in my profile. So 
is it is the publication is uh, highly mandatory for getting an admission for phd in pharmaceutical outcomes program would you like me to answer that one melissa yes please go ahead hi um sandeep um, i'm michael johnson and i'm um, similar to dr gomica in our department i chair the admissions committee uh, really the graduate education committee that oversees uh, the, the whole program at the department level. And we also take all the applications uh, and process them for admission. And um, when we look at an application, we do look at prior research experience and that always helps um, it, your application. So in your case, if you have, uh, if, even one manuscript, that's helpful. There's certainly no minimum. We, we don't have a minimum requirement on that um, element of our um, assessment, but we do look for that. And so it's, it's helpful if you've had some prior uh, research experience. And um, I'll just say kind of in general, um, the same things that Dr. Gomica was saying about the application and application process we're we're very interested in your um, independent statement and we look there for um, your goals uh, some in, some uh, statements and in interest of why you want to come to UH why you want to get a PhD why do you want to get this particular PhD what do you think you want to do with your career? Uh, any ideas you have so far about that? Uh, we understand and I encourage all, all students to um, kind of look around and see what your options are. There's a lot of options in academia, in pharmaceutical industries, in um, other healthcare related industries and in pharmacoeconomics. Uh, so there are many different avenues and consulting firms that we place our students. So you may not know exactly what you want in a career, but you should have some idea about why you want a PhD, what interests you about research, what kind of research do you think you might want to do. And so we look for things like that. And uh, in addition, we uh, evaluate the, your statement and your uh, recommendation letters and uh, other information that we uh, obtained from the file. So um, I'm happy to also answer any other questions about how the program works and uh, what kind of you know, education opportunities you should expect. Definitely we collaborate very strongly with Texas Medical Center, uh, doctors and scientists and uh, doing research in lots of different hospital settings and other universities within the med center. So uh, any questions I can answer, please let me know. And Sandeep, I hope I answered your question. Yes, Dr. General Johnson, you answered satisfyingly. I love, I just, you know, I'm just satisfied with your answers. Thank you so much for sure. a valuable answer. Any other questions? Students have any, any guys have any questions about our programs? There's a question well, in the chat. I'm not yes. sure if uh, Dr. Johnson. Actually, sir, uh, yes, I yesterday I have mail regarding the GR examination. Uh, like I'm not able to take GR exam uh, right at this time, but I have studied mathematics and biostatistics uh, in my bachelor's. So yeah, so I have uh, I have not received any reply from the UH. About what exactly? Starting to waive my application for GRE. I'm sorry, if, uh, if you've asked Melissa, if it's for PHOP program, she usually sends it to me. I might have missed it. So I'll ask Melissa to look for that and, and uh, send it back to me. I'm sorry if I missed that. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. There's a question in the chat from Islam about how many applications we receive and how many of them are accepted. 
within our program, uh, Islam, we we tend to receive around 25 to 30 uh, applications a year, varies. Um, last year, we admitted four students. And this coming year, I think we will be in that same ballpark. Maybe it might be five, it might be six, possibly, I don't know, but I, I, I never know the exact answer to that until we get through the process and, and next, about next springtime in March or April. But my guess right now is four or five or six around there that we would admit. So I can uh, speak for the PPS program. Uh, I think we received about um, 80 applications last year. Um, I, uh, we admitted uh, about, uh, I think 11. Uh, Melissa, correct me if it is wrong. No, that's about right. And so I usually tell students, um, it varies per year. It really depends on the number of faculty that are uh, having funding and are looking for students. And then also the number of our current students who graduate. So it does vary um, and then also Keep in mind that it is a small application pool, but that is because it is a competitive program. Could you, uh, could our students who are in, our prospective students, could you tell us what programs you are wanting to apply to? So I know Sandeep uh, mentioned pharmaceutical health outcomes and policy, but um, Islam, you and maybe Sina and who else that has asked questions. Um, if you could please let us know what program you're applying to, which concentration, whether it's pharmaceutics, pharmacology, medicinal chemistry or pharmaceutical health outcomes and policy. That would better help us um, answer some of your questions. I think um, Islam's question is the ranking of the application. Okay, Islam, I'm seeing a question there about how the average weight given to each of the application components and you applied to the PHOP. And also, Amrita, I'll answer your question next. Um, uh, Islam, we, we have a kind of a combined uh, thing where we review the um, elements I described earlier in your application, and they're fairly equally weighted. We look at the quantitative measures of um, GPA, uh, TOEFL if it's required, GRE if we have it, and then we look at some of the qualitative measures I described about your, your uh, statement of purpose and the letters, and we evaluate those and rank those. Those are actually all fairly equally weighted by the time we look through your application file. And then um, we have sort of a preliminary ranking there that we then decide who to interview. And once we interview you, which is in person if you're in Houston, otherwise we do um, you know, Skype or, or some kind of version of an online video conference call. Uh, the interview questions that we ask um, about uh, wh why you want to do this program, what you expect out of it, and your research interest and so forth. The interview itself is actually about equally weighted then with the rest of the, with the rankings that we got from your file. So the interview is quite important. Uh, but so is everything else in your application. Um, we all take it uh, under careful consideration. Um, to Amrita, for your question, um, <clears throat> in the past, we, we still require GRE unless uh, you've had serious issues with trying to obtain one during or due to COVID. Uh, we use the GRE to help us um, assess um, a student's quantitative um, capacities from on their uh, exams and their verbal because we found that a lot of our coursework is quite, um, we have pretty heavy coursework for the first two years. We found that people with uh, good GREs tend to do a little better in that phase. 
Um, we have a lot of biostat coursework that, and computer coursework that's it's not really that difficult mathematically, but someone with good math skills can uh, usually do that stuff a little easier. Uh, so we look at it, it's, it's in there in the weighting, but it's not, again, any more heavily weighted than anything else. I hope that answered both of your questions. Previously, also there was a question about so GRE will will not be reviewed. Uh, uh, yeah, that was um, Cena, and then she messaged me privately. I think um, she is interested in applying to a pharmaceutical program. Okay, so uh, again, uh, Dr. Johnson uh, mentioned about the PHOP requirement. So. For PPS, uh, we have actually fully waived uh, GRE. So for the PPS, uh, GRE will not be a component. Uh, that's why I emphasize very strongly about the uh, writing that statement. Actually, those four essays, uh, we specifically ask those questions uh, for the PPS, again, for the PPS uh, program. Make sure you write, provide us all the details uh, on that. Um, and so, Sina, to answer or to further on your last question about the submitting your application on February 1st. So, the reason why I said um, it's a hard deadline is because usually by that time, by February, our committees are already in the review process and are possibly already making decisions about which applications to invite for an interview. So I would not suggest um, submitting your application any later than January 10th. Um, usually if there are like, if there's a document that's missing or if like say a letter of recommendation is missing um, or if you've already taken the test and we just haven't received the scores those sort of things, um, I usually let the committee know and they know to expect it, but um, I don't know that they would, they'd want to wait until February 1st. So that's pretty far in after they've already started the review process. Um, and then the, re the other reason why they like to do things early on is because, especially for international applicants, we do have to send out I-20s um, and that, you know, takes a little bit of time. You have to schedule your visa um, interviews. So it's just the process is a little time consuming um, and we try to do it as early as possible just so that we're not having to kind of wait to the last minute and have any issues with those things as well. So those things are important and that is why I'd really encourage everyone to, to submit their application by the deadline. Um, and if you can't get the GRE done, then I don't, would not suggest um, delaying your application, um, especially for pharmaceutics, because as Dr. Gomiki said, um, they are waiving it, so it's not a required thing. I'm trying to think on how to answer your question, Islam. So usually if there is anything uh, missing in the application, I will reach out to everyone and say, uh, hey, you know, there, this is missing and we need to get it by this date so that we can review your application. And then once the applications are in the review process, you probably won't hear from me until I hear from the committee um, and they've given me the names of the students who they want to invite for an interview, um, at which point I would um, arrange those interviews. Um, so you'd be hearing from me then. Um, so I, it takes a couple of weeks, I would say for sure. Um, it especially depends on how many applications we've received uh, and what, how much work the committee has to review. Yeah, so uh, the, the timeline is kind of like uh, after the deadline, uh, after Melissa compiled everything together, the committee starts reviewing uh, kind of uh, last week of uh, third to last week of uh, January. And then we have preliminary uh, uh, selections by 
first week of february or so so then that is the time actually uh, melissa will reach out to uh, whoever get the uh, maybe interviews uh, and then uh, we go with the the next uh, completion of the reviews and the decisions uh, comes like first week of march end of february to first week of march you all have had really good questions this morning uh, if you have any questions for our current students please here here they may answer some of the questions that you maybe haven't considered yet um, about, you know, the culture here at UH or within the department or, you know, what it's like to live in Houston, those sort of things um, that maybe you haven't considered yet, but are also important. Please feel free to ask us whatever it is that you need. So um, Rita, to answer your question about the TOEFL, we actually, the programs don't, um, have a TOEFL requirement, it's actually the university. So that comes from UH. Um, the minimum TOEFL to get admitted into any program here at the University of Houston is 79. Um, there is an additional um, for teaching is like, so to become a teaching assistant, there is a, a little bit, um, I think the writing gets looked at, but I will have to get back to you on that because no. Um, better has that answer. So I will have to get back to you on that. But as far as just getting admitted to the program, as long as you have a 79, that's all that we need. As long as you meet what the university requires. Are there any other questions? Sandeep, you look like you're thinking about it. Can we apply um, in more than one program? Certainly, you can apply to as many programs as you like. Thank you. Just uh, be advised so that you do have to pay an application fee for each one. Um, so if you are maybe not sure which one to apply to and that's why you're thinking of applying more than one then it's better to just ask um maybe just ask yourself what it is that you want out of it and then uh, maybe the faculty can also help you find out what these programs are like um but yeah if that's what it is that you're trying to do if you're just not sure which one to apply to then maybe i would not suggest applying to multiple um maybe it would be best to figure out what fits what you want Thank you, ma'am. Islam, with regards to the question about the minimum score for, T, for being a TA, uh, no, it's not that there is a minimum per se, it's just that there is a preferred that we want to see on the writing portion of it and find that uh, information provided to you. But as long as you meet the minimum that the university has set, then that is enough to get you admitted, whether it be an RA or a TA. And by the way, so the decision on whether you are given a teaching assistantship or a research assistantship position um, depends on the committee. They're the ones that decide that when reviewing your application, um, except maybe in pharmaceutical health outcomes and policy program. For the most part, I believe that all of the applicants that get admitted into that program are given teaching assistantships their first year. 
maybe I don't see Dr. Johnson. Though. Pardon, what was what would you asking me that PHOP admits um, come in as TAs? Well, most do. Um, again, uh, when we we evaluate sort of whether we're going to accept a student separately from what kind of funding we can offer. And we kind of evaluate then what kind of funding we have available. There are, I think we have admitted some students with uh, a research assistant uh, funding. Mostly it's TA funding. Uh, and then again, as Melissa mentioned earlier, that sometimes a student doesn't even request funding, but we rarely have uh, students who are, we don't have very many who are already self-funded or are working. Um, we don't have too many like that. <clears throat> okay, I see that question from uh, Alka or Aika? Alka? Alka. Um, that's a great question. Uh, in PHOP, um, many students. Um, that are graduate go into roles in pharmaceutical uh, industries uh, as uh, you know associate directors or directors of um, different health economics and outcome research units within the pharma companies. We also uh, graduates go into consulting firms. We know we're very well networked with uh, pharmaceutical companies, research consulting firms. Of course, other colleges of pharmacy uh, in academia, we have graduates pursue uh, positions as uh, professors, uh, assistant level professors in, in universities. Um, you know, uh, all of our students have jobs, uh, or all of our graduates have excellent jobs. Um, so we're, we're quite confident, we're happy. We talk, we have our alumni come uh, talk to us. We have another alumni, I think, coming Friday talking uh, to the students about what they do. Um, if it's possible, you could certainly join that the Zoom call. Maybe Melissa could forward you that information if you're interested in. Uh, but yeah, we have a variety of jobs in the in, uh, industry after graduation. There is a question for you, Dr. Gomika. Um, Sina wants to know if you conduct any clinical trials. Uh, actually, not really uh, in, in our areas, uh, but we are actually, uh, I mean, uh, if you join a research group, so the, um, the research groups are like highly collaborative. So we are in the, uh, the world's biggest uh, medical center. So of course, the, we have a lot of other collaborations, most of the faculty uh, with the um, uh, MD Anderson Cancer Center, Baylor College of Medicine, and there are multiple other places. So um, yes, so through those, uh, you get that, uh, touch or the experience if you need, uh, but uh, uh, in our college, in our department, I don't think we do directly uh, the clinical trials, but uh, compared to many other places, you get the exposure here because of the, uh, this, we are in the, the biggest uh, medical center. So um, I don't know whether I answer you the question, is that what you want to find out? Uh, And I missed um, Islam's question, but so if you are accepted into the program, um, you have to be here well before the start of the semester. So the fall semester usually starts um, in mid-August, but because there is a lot of uh, paperwork and training that needs to be conducted, um, there's also an orientation. We usually ask that you're here by, I believe it's about August the 1st, and it depends, it changes depending on the um, academic calendar, which for fall 2021, 
we don't have that calendar yet, but it would more than likely be um, that first week of August that you would be required to be here. And um, my, and then also, I'm sorry. I don't go ahead. Yeah. Oh, no, I was going to say, Sina also is asking for yes. the students. I don't think that question was for, for us. <laughs> nightlife in Houston. So I'm not sure what kind of nightlife you like. Um, I consider myself an old lady in the sense of nightlife because I'm married and have a dog and live in a house. Um, but with that being said, I think Houston has a lot to offer, um, especially for foodies out there. Um, there are so many restaurants, um, so many like, especially with COVID right now, things are a little weird, but Houston being as nice as it is, there's a lot of patios and outdoor seating at a lot of different restaurants. So I find myself going out to those more than anything right now. Um, I think downtown and in some of the more um, restaurant areas, you can find some real nightlife, clubs, bars, etc. cetera. Um, I personally, no, it does not <laughs> close at eight or nine. I think there's lots going on all the time, um, depending on where you're going and what you're doing. Um, I also think that there's, we have like stadiums and concerts and things that happen throughout the city. Um, granted COVID right now, things are a little weird, um, but there's never um, a lack of things to do. Um, especially, you know, if you like to get outside, um, there's a lot of green space, um, even though it is a city and there's lots of restaurants, lots of places to go grab a drink. Um, breweries are starting to pop up. Um, there's a few places downtown that have like, um, you know, food trucks and drinks and all kinds of stuff. So, uh, after nine o'clock, there are things that are still open. It is not, um, a little town in the middle of nowhere that closes at nine. <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask, what is the search conditions or the research experience that we gain in pharmacoepidemiology under PHOP? What were the, what are the uh, uh, opportunities for experience? Was that the question? Yes, sir. The research experience or research exposure in pharmacoepidemiology. Oh, well, actually, pharmacoepidemiology is one of the strengths of our program. And several of our faculty are very involved in that kind of research. And uh, I, I am, uh, and uh, at least three other of our faculty, uh, that's exactly what we do. And so we're quite involved with uh, doctors in the medical center. Um, for the most part, but other places as well. Uh, we collaborate with physicians in MD Anderson, uh, Cancer uh, Center, um, UT, uh, University of Texas uh, Health, um, that their medical school, Baylor College of Medicine, um, uh, School of Public Health. And we have, we have um, collaborations all over where we're getting clinical input on the kind of questions that uh, doctors need evidence for in terms of safety and effectiveness of drugs and people with chronic conditions. And so we, we have a lot of research in that area. That's one of our strengths of our program. I hope I, I hope I answered that for you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, your, your answer was clear and good. Yeah, I'm happy with the answer. Oh, good. Are there other questions?
Well, we're getting um, near to 11 o'clock. Um, we have a few more minutes left. I wanna thank everyone for attending today's session, um, including Melissa and the faculty and all of the students um, who presented their great information today about the program. Um, and if you guys have any questions, you guys will be getting um, an email from me with the presentation as a follow-up. Um, and hopefully you guys will be applying and considering this program. Um, so thanks for joining us. Have a great week, everyone. Feel free to log off if you want. If you have remaining questions, I'm sure we'll stay on for a few more minutes. Um, but yeah, have a great day and thanks again. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you to our faculty and our current students. I know that you have very busy schedules, um, but I am so thankful that you took the time off of your days to um, come and meet with some of our prospective students. Um, and, and to our prospective students, I just want to say that that shows a lot about what these uh, programs um, do and what they are um, and just their interest in our prospective students. So thanks. And to reiterate also what Bina has said, if you still have any questions even after today's session, please feel free to email me. I know some of you have already emailed me um, and I actually invited you to the session. So you already have my email and you have my phone number which is listed on every of my email signatures. Um, so if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out at any time. Um, don't wait until it's too late. You still have plenty of time to get your application, um, you know, put together and taken care of. So if you have any questions, I am here for you. All right. Thank you all and uh, good luck with everything. And again, Melissa said, like, uh, we are here to answer your, any, uh, any of your questions. So please let us know if you have any questions. Uh, yeah, don't wait until for the last moment. So put everything together. And especially, like I said, this is different. So uh, with the PPS, so you have to write those uh, four specific essays. So make sure you give every detail in essay format. So it, take, it will take some time. So please uh, plan things ahead. So... And I would just like to say that I hope to see some of you during interviews or orientation. I'm typically there to help out um, and you know meet with you guys. Um, I always look forward to the new students that are coming in and um, we just like to be um, one big happy family and PPS. So um, have a great rest of your Wednesdays and um, be safe during COVID. <laughs>